Welcome to the OpsQC podcast, episode two, helping entrepreneurs, innovators, and small business owners scale to profitability. The goal of this podcast is to showcase real businesses, real owners, tell their stories, learn a little, and have some fun while doing it. Today, please welcome Tony Pierce of Wayward Studios and Finger Lakes Grindhouse, located in Auburn, New York. Tony's and my friendship goes back to high school in the little town of Port Byron, New York. He has always been a creative spirit and his works have been the focus of many attractions. After art school, he spent some time at Universal Studios designing backdrops of sets for various rides, some possibly that you've been on. His works are really intricate, high quality, and absolutely unique. I'll include links to his works in the transcripts. I introduce to you the one and only Tony Pierce. Tony, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. It's been a while, man. Uh, great to see you, even if it is over Zoom. <laughs> Right? It has been a while, hasn't it? How have you uh, been yeah. over the years? I see you look well. Looks like you're doing good. You too, man. You too. Hanging so in there. So, Tony, uh, why don't you give the listeners a little bit of background about Wayward Studios yourself and uh, so we understand who you are? Um, well, as you know, we went to high school together. So, I grew up the same town you did and then went to college at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh for movie special effects but then ended up down in Orlando working for the theme parks, um, doing sets and costumes and, and that type of stuff. And then eventually, you know, you start having kids, those jobs aren't steady. You know what I mean? That's yeah. a hire for the job when the job's over, everybody gets laid off. You know what I mean? Very so project it, based, right? Yeah. So we had, a, we had property up here and um, we just decided to move back and put the kids through school. And cool. um, yeah. So now I've, when I moved up here, I switched from doing, you know, all the sets and stuff more into getting, you know, into the signs and, and that type of, that type of thing. But we still do some stuff for the theme parks uh, once in a while. We still get a couple of gigs here and there, but nice. mostly it's the sign stuff now. Okay. So, I mean, when I look at what you do, I kind of describe that more as a creative artwork and signs, I think custom signs. I wouldn't call them your more traditional stuff, even though you do the traditional work. I'd say yeah. you've got more of a creative flair to those things. Is that accurate? A lot more demand. Yeah. Cause down, I mean, down in Florida, you know, all the signs are so big and dimensional and fiberglass and, you know, everybody's trying to outdo the outdo each other with their, you know, sign presentations out on the side of the road. Sure. So yeah, a lot of the work that I did down there was, you know, a lot more dimensional than up here. But at the same time, I would, I've been able to create a, a niche for myself where if, if you want something, you know, a little out of the ordinary or something that's not cookie cutter, you know, go see Tony because he's the one that'll come up with, you know, something a little more out of the ordinary than the other sign shops here in town. They that's mostly just print stickers. <laughs> that's how I, you know, when they ask, you know, what's, what's, why should I go? It's because I make signs, whereas the other sign shops in town, they print stickers for the most part. You get what I mean? Like they're printing out stickers and they're putting the sticker on a piece of metal and putting the sticker on a piece of plastic. Whereas I carve and, you know, do dimensional lettering and, you know, that type of stuff. So it's, it's sure. a little more. So how many years would you say you've been doing the custom sign work? <laughs> I was still working for the theme parks and I made my first sign. And what I discovered, okay, so I was out in my garage and I was, I was just doing a sign for a friend. And then a neighbor came over and was like, oh, I didn't know you made signs. Well, I, I don't really, you know what I mean? But then he wanted me to make a sign. And it wasn't long before I discovered that I was able to make more money in a fraction of the time. And, you know, it doesn't take long before you're like, well, screw, screw going to work. I can just make signs in the garage, you know, in my head. Right. Be, be even more ahead of the game and it, it was more you know more steady it wasn't so you know unreliable and half the time I wasn't you know searching for work the work was finding me as opposed to me having to look for it so nice yeah more so steady income. more steady income then yeah, yeah sorry my cat's doing something sorry so thinking about that like uh you've gone through doing the signs for a while recently you started a side project uh, Finger Lakes Grindhouse Studios. Would you like to talk oh, yeah, about that a little bit? Well, it started, well, once the kids, you know, got out of school, um, the sign thing, I, I, honestly, is, is a little boring to me. I mean, it's, it's a way to make money, like I said, quick, and you get to be your own boss. I mean, it has its advantages. 
but at the same time, creatively, it wasn't really <laughs> getting me where I wanted to be. Sure. So as I said previously, I had, um, I had gone to school for movie special effects and um, I had toyed with the idea of going out to LA and, and, you know, trying to go work on movies. But then I was, you know, you're going to end up back in the mold room making $10 an hour. You're, you're a 45 year old man. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So I was kind of just like, screw it. I'll just, I'll just make my own movie. You get what I mean? And then at first everybody thought I was kind of crazy. The owner of the drive-in theater was, has been a big, um, big supporter of this project. You know, he's going to, he's going to show it out of the theater when it's, when it's all finished. That'll be fun. Very it should cool. be done this year. It, sh it sh would have been done this year if it wasn't for the coronavirus. But, you know, hopefully by this time next year, yeah, I will have made a, made a feature film and shown it at the drive-in theater. That's, that's we'll extremely unique. And, uh, you know, I always think of you as one of the most creative people I know. You, oh, well, thanks. Creative energy. <laughs> And uh, I'm not surprised you've kind of ventured down this path. And I'm very anxious as others are to see what the end result's going to be. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, it should be interesting. It's not going to be for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make low budget trash. You know what I mean? Like it's supposed to look like 70s, early 80s, just horror, boobs, blood, monsters. I tried to make it as over the top as I possibly could while s still trying to... You know, people aren't going to hopefully be walking out, but at the same time, there are scenes where people should be, should have trouble watching it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We'll see. Right. It's, a, it's a line I'm trying to skate. One of the things I always talk to business owners, entrepreneurs about is uh, following your passion. Because I, I think as you noted, right, I mean, you don't want to be in the back of mold room getting paid 10 bucks an hour as a 45 year old man making molds for, you know, sets or things. You wanted to be into it. So you're, I mean, this is where your passion is. You're, you're creative. You wanted to do a retro film, horror film. Um, doing this type of work, right, gives meaning, gives purpose to people. It's like it energizes you to get up, right? That's, that's, I think, is one of the cool things about what you're doing is you're really embracing that. And that's one thing I really try and stress to entrepreneurs. If you don't like what you're doing getting up, you're not going to put 100% into it. That's 100% true. I, yeah, Absolutely. You got to do, or you'll never do it. Just like you said, you'll, you'll never be able to, you'll always be a reason why you don't want to work on this thing if you're not into it. Sure. Yeah. So you kind of covered why you moved back to the uh, Auburn area. And I, I totally understand that for family reasons, more steady work, things of that nature. Um, thinking down the path of some of your more notable uh, custom artwork and signs you've done, like the shark's mouth or the gorilla with a Coke, what do people pay for that? Like, where does that come from? Right. Can you kind of walk me through those projects? What exactly drove those and how did you get? Involved? Yeah. Well, that particular theme park is called summer waves. It's, it's down on Jekyll Island, um, <clears throat> Georgia. And they, they, I used to do sign work for them as well. When I moved up here, they obviously found another sign shop to take care of their little daily needs but the big stuff they still use me for like that shark mouth was $22,000 nice which okay, which sounds like a big number I, I was telling somebody else the same story okay so two years ago we did that shark mouth right yep 22,000 took all summer long blah 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 this summer pick and pull changed its name to you pull them okay okay they had 30 containers. They had to have all of their signs changed. Big job. When the smoke was settled and everything was all said and done, I made more money off of putting stickers on the dumpsters in a fraction of the amount of time than I did that, that shark mouth that took all summer long. Now, you don't get to, there's nobody's writing a newspaper article on you with the news. You get what I mean? Nobody's sending you to Georgia to go sit in an amusement park and install the cool shark mouth. You don't get all the accolades. But at the end of the day, you get what I mean? Putting stickers yeah. on dumpsters made more money in a fraction of the time than that big, huge shark mouth. Like so the, the shark, shark mouth is great. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I mean? But at I mean, the same time, thinks. yeah. Uh, Everybody thinks about the the big number you got paid, but I mean the cost of you doing that, and it takes oh, long absolutely. Bit, right the amount of labor that went into that and the travel. There's a lot of cost that goes into that, right? And I, I sure. can't imagine 
trying to accurately quote something unique is like tough that. is definitely you're guessing you're, yeah. you're educating me educated guessing you get what i mean like eh. but yeah Absolutely. i definitely underbid it a little bit that was for sure but it was a great but we didn't lose money on it you get what i mean like yeah. i used that to buy all the movie gear when the shark mouth cleared that's how i bought all the editing bay and the <clears throat> so it was all said and done i just you know, i did all of that for camera gear sure no that that you know just keep rolling in into the stuff you're passionate about right yeah if you can turn that into something else right <laughs> um a couple of questions right uh, as far as your company friends and family involved like i mean how do you how do you manage yeah that? my wife lois is a significant part of the i can't do half the stuff without her you get what like she has to be there she's got a really good eye she's a good illustrator um She's been doing it enough now that if I put my hand out, she knows which tool to put in it without me having to say, you know, scalpel, whatever. She sure. knows, you know. Uh, so it's good. It's good. It's good having her around. I couldn't do it without her. Absolutely. She's always been creative too, as far as I remember, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Artistic. Met in art class. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you started out the sign business in the beginning, like you talked about starting in your garage, right? Um, did you have to invest in tools? Um, did you have any idea like what that was going to look like, how much money you're going to spend to get going? Or was it just kind of like, I'm going to do this and just, you know, as we go, we're going to learn and we're going to figure it out. No, I, I bought an old plotter off of a guy because I had to go, I would go to the, to other sign shops, to, you know, get vinyl and stuff like that. And, you know, kind of told them what I was doing. Oh, we got an old plotter in the back you know, 500 bucks, it's yours. You know what I mean? You just sure. kind of start doing it that way until, until eventually you can afford to buy your own, you know, that's how you do it. That's the okay. camera gear I bought was all used at first too, just to make sure that, you know, before right. you get this huge investment, make sure it's really, you're going to stick with it. <laughs> Bootstrap you know startups, I mean? man. That's the way to go. Just uh, get into it and, you know, try and, you know, feel it out, see if it's a good fit and if it's going to roll. Right. Yeah. Well, I tell my, you know, I tell myself the cameras I have aren't the, the latest and the greatest, but they're better than the cameras that they like shot, you know, Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark on ET. These are better, can you know what I mean? So yeah. It, yeah. you can do it. You just need to, you know, it's all about the story or whatever, you know. Technology has improved significantly since the 1970s, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's on your phone now. Sure, sure. Um, so how was it received when you start getting into the sign business and, uh, you know, the, your family and like that, like Lois and, you know, your friends, like, did they encourage you? Did they support you? Or was it more like, you know, Tony, what are you doing? You, you really, this guy who does all this movie set stuff or this, yeah, uh, it was a little bit of both, you know? Yeah. yeah like Tony, this is, seems a little, uh, I don't know what beneath you to be messing around with these. Like, yeah, but <laughs> You're going to work tomorrow and I'm not, you know what I mean? So, you know, whatever. Do what you got to do, right? Yeah, exactly. Where, how long did it take you for that startup in the sign business to get to a point where you felt comfortable? Like right now, I, I think we talked before this, you're booked out a couple months. So you feel pretty comfortable. You've, you've got a pipeline of work that you can rely on. How long was it when you, you know, after you started until you got to that comfort level? it would come and go. Cause if I, if I moved or if I switched shops, you have to start over again. It takes usually about two years. Okay. I've set up and broke down enough sign. Usually in about two years, you've got enough of a thing coming in that you're not, if you don't get a phone call or you don't have any jobs come in for a couple of days, you're not thrown into a, into a sure. panic. Okay. And a lot you know of what I mean? Business? Like it takes a little while for that to go away. Yeah. Absolutely. You you out, name, you don't, nobody comes in the door. You don't make any money. Right. There is no paycheck unless you, you know, make it yourself. I don't know. Majority of uh, your jobs, are they repeat business or are they word of mouth networking? Sometimes, yeah, 50-50, I would think. If the person's, you know, own a lot of property and there's a, and there's a turnover in their, you know, rentals, then yes. But if you're, you know, if it's just a one-off, they've just got the one business you put, once you put their sign up, you know, they're not coming back for a new sign anytime soon. Sure. You know? How do you market being that you're a sign guy and you make signs for a living? What's your preferred marketing method? Is it, is it more online? Signs, more <laughs> like literally <clears throat> take a building, right? You rent a spot, you put a plotter in it and you put a sign above it that says signs, vehicle graphics, banners, 
people just start walking in. It's it really? doesn't take a whole lot of um, I don't know. It just kind of does it. Or at least I've. It's always just kind of done it for me. It didn't really take okay. a lot of advertising and knocking on doors. It was just a matter of putting a sign up and being there when somebody showed up. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. How about competition? And do good work. You know what I mean? You you gotta. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta they, yeah. They won't come back. That's also a key to it. Absolutely. Quality is, is always key, right? Nobody's going to come back to somebody who does poor work right. or craftsmanship. That's not a problem you have based on what I see on what you guys produce. So you yeah, guys some good stuff. You do it long enough. There's a formula to it. You know what I mean? Like you start seeing a pattern. If you were to lay out all of my signs, Oh, he does all his restaurants this way. Oh, he does all of his, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as far as competition, is there anybody really in the area that's a, a competitor to what you do? I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, there's two others. Creative. Okay. Two others. They don't do the same type of, we, there's a lot that crosses over, but then there's stuff that they do vehicle wraps. I don't do vehicle wraps. Mm -hmm. I do dimensional signage. Like they don't paint. They don't put a, they don't paint anything. You okay. get what I mean? They just do stickers. Yep. Whereas I don't really do a lot of, I do a lot of, you know, painting and carving and that type of sure. thing. Is there any passing of work back, back and forth between you guys? Or like you say, hey, you guys. Do he's kind of of I, don't, I don't really like him to be totally honest with you. Like okay. it's not because he's got a sign shop with genuinely because I don't like his personality. Gotcha. Okay. Because if you have friends in the sign business, it's good to have them. Oh shit. I need a piece of whatever. Yeah. You get what I mean? But I yeah. couldn't even keep up that type of, I was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that out whatever i don't know personalities being what they are yeah absolutely uh, so let's uh let's jump forward to the the year 2020 right where we're at right now with the whole covid thing we've been in this thing for about what nine months now can you talk yeah. about how that's impacted your business i mean how it's changed maybe the products you make or you know uh, just uh even your clientele right i mean how has covid really moved the needle with uh with the design guys well, the, I, I'm in my home, my home office. Now the shop is, <clears throat> I can walk back and forth. The shop is just right over there. So a lot of times I would be here at the home office working and I would get the phone call, Hey, I'm in front of your shop, you know, whatever, where are you at? And I got to go over there. But now I can be working in my home office and it's acceptable. You know what I mean? Whereas before they're like, I'm at your shop. This is business hours. You're supposed to be here. Whereas now no, oh, man, I'm at my home office. So that worked out good. Um, not a lot. I didn't even get a lot of the COVID signs. You know what I mean? Like a lot of that um, six feet apart, all that distance. Right. I didn't get a lot of that stuff either. I was nervous in the beginning, but then that thing with pick and pull came through and that was my, that was my summer. Nice. I just sat in the parking lot all summer, putting stickers on dumpsters. Sure. That's yeah. Uh, Knocking pretty... out two a day or whatever. Yeah. Are you guys involved in uh, any of the local, uh, like, chamber of commerce or any any places like that for networking so i don't really get into that whole hobnobby <laughs> bullshit you know what i mean come in by the sign if you don't want it i don't know it's all about your work i i get it man you're you're about hey i do quality stuff and if you, yeah. want, you want it if you don't you don't right i don't need to be down there i don't know acting like i like these people <laughs> you know you know what i mean like i don't have anything in common with them what am i oh. gonna go you want to hear about my monster movie? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, I yeah, no, it's do, man. networking, you know, networking takes different forms I see. Um, and uh, there's some people who gravitate towards that and there's other people who don't. Right. I mean, um, there's some people that their whole business is just built on networking. And um, it's, it's interesting just knowing the people I know in my circle of friends, right. Knowing their personalities and seeing like how they gravitate towards different ones. Um, social media, man, social media has been a huge impact, obviously, in the last couple of years. Has that impacted what you do? I mean, do you find you're getting more leads from that? Do you find your, your clientele knows? I leave, I don't even have a social media for this, for the sign shop. I've got my stuff where I post my goofy little, and I post my signs, but I don't, I don't interact like well you see when i post like i don't explain what anything is no. here's a picture you get it i make signs i don't know. You can, 
So you prefer the social media thing to be more of a personal thing. And I know online on the web, you guys have a nice gallery of your stuff that you do. That drives it more than anything. People go and, you know, people who live in Auburn, I need a sign and that thing comes up and that's, that's what does most of my marketing for me is that website. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And I, I'm looking at different avenues people use what's effective, what's not websites in this day and age seem to be very effective. Uh, some people Vehicle are, graphics go a long way. Just driving that truck around town, you know, that. Sure. Go to the store. You, you get what I mean? A lot of times you come out of the store or somebody's over there by your truck, writing the phone number down or they'll, they'll stop you when they see you getting out or getting in. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Just the truck does a lot. The website does a lot. Obviously the, um, the storefront does a lot. Just people driving by and seeing, you know, the sign shop. Okay. Brick and mortar. Yeah. I'm right across the street from Wegmans. I don't oh, know if you know where I am. So if you're coming out of Wegmans front door, I have a sign that says, you get what I mean? So I'm sure that probably okay. drives a lot of it too. Yeah. For the if people coming who are in out of Wegmans, you see my store. Yeah, for the people who are listening over the nation, uh, Wegmans is a uh, northeast chain. Uh, it's a very big rest or very big grocery store chain. Um, out here in the Midwest, where I'm at in Chicago area, um, it'd be equivalent to like a uh, to a Mariano's or a, or a Kroger or something like that. Oh, so, is that what you guys have, Kroger's? Yeah. Okay. So there's there's a, a little bit of a difference as you go geographically, right? But yeah. Wegmans is, has Down a high south it was Publix. That's right, Publix. In Florida yeah. was Publix. Interesting. Um, is there any specialty in signs that you feel you guys really have? Like, I mean, I think most people think signs, they think like, you know, neon or, or even just, you know, over the business, the kind of 3D uh, type sign work, right? Um, is there any ones that you guys like really, that's your specialty, that's your sweet spot? You guys, Yeah, the router about? cut dimensional hand carved signage. That's the one. Okay. That's the one with they if they come seeking me out specifically, that's why. Gotcha. You know, usually if they're walking in off the streets, they're they're walking in because they want a banner or they want a you know something something generic. Whereas if, if they I'm looking for Tony, then they're they're generally looking for something custom or you know something unique about it. That, yeah. Even the other sign shops will send will send them to me if, if they can't ask for. Nice, nice. Does it mean? Got that reputation, man. You yeah. Reputation. And then I, <laughs> I send them jobs too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um. So as you've gone through the years, Tony, and you've been doing business with the sign stuff, and then getting involved in more your passion with you know doing this uh, recent thing with the the horror film. What are some of the big takeaways? What are some of the big lessons learned that you've come away with and said, you know what? that's a key thing I wish I had known back when I was first doing this thing. <laughs> Always take a deposit. <laughs> Did you get stiffed on jobs? You do a couple times. Well, in the beginning, I mean, I was doing it down in Florida. It's a much bigger, obviously city than the city of Auburn. City. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've been, I think every, everybody's trying to, if they walk into the place, in my head, they're trying to screw me in some way. So I'm always trying to figure out what their angle is. Uh, That's uh, tough. That's yeah, tough. always take a deposit. If they don't pay, I take their sign down. You know what I mean? Like, I really protect myself now, whereas I didn't in the future. I used to allow myself to get taken a lot. I'm surprised. Whereas now I don't trust anybody. You know what I mean? pay me i don't care i'll take your sign down you get what i mean like yeah. i can't be, i'm not emotionally involved which is one of the nice things about it whereas when i was working for the theme parks and you do these you know you got your heart and soul in some of these sculptures and all this stuff and for these guys in these suits and these clipboards to come up and i don't know so to dismissively tell you everything that's i don't know i didn't <laughs> felt like a whore you know what i mean whereas yeah. with with the sign thing i don't have to care Yep. I don't care. It's a sign. You get what I mean? I don't have to yeah. take it so personally. Sure. I don't, you want it blue? You want it green? I'll put Mickey Mouse. To kind of swear. I don't care. Whatever. You can pay me, cut me the check. <laughs> <My job. laughs> That's great. Nice. Customer nice. relations, but it's true. <laughs> this is the beauty of it. I don't have to care. 
Uh, it, it's it's key. So that problem. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not key. I mean, I care about the sign, but at the same time, I'm not that you know, yeah, I'm not that emotionally involved in. The- right. So if somebody comes into you, right? So they they obviously you know they've got a need for something dimensional. They they come in, they're like, hey want to do this job they give you like a sketch or they just kind of talk you through what their idea is for well the first thing or? i ask is what's your budget yeah you, you get what i mean yeah. how much money in your head do you think you can spend on this right. or do you want to spend on this sure how much is a sign i mean i can take a piece of a crayon and a piece of notebook paper and five dollars or i yeah. i mean we could do a 30 foot by 50 yeah. foot you know five hundred thousand dollars somewhere in there is your number that's what I need first. Yeah. You get what I mean? Because I don't want to design a thirty thousand dollars sign if you've got fifteen dollars, or you know, yeah. vice versa, wasting everybody's time. So that's usually first. Makes How much sense. money you got? What are you trying to do? What are you selling? Yep. Yeah. There's a there's a budget component. Do you have a logo, be... or do I need to come up with one? Right. Do they have a brand? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just and just feel it out and get as much information as I can and then just start going from there a mm-hmm. sketch or just something am I even on the right track if I don't put a lot of it a lot of time into the sketches at first mm-hmm. you know what I mean just to kind of get and then they just slowly get more and more complex until we get it to is that a long process rate, something they can afford that they're happy with yeah is that a long process from the time you give them the first sketch they give you some feedback you try and limit that so that it's only like a maximum of so many times that you do that? Oh, I definitely try to limit the amount of times I do that. Um, it just depends. Some some people are, are obviously harder to, to work with than others, you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. And that, you know, it just depends on the, depends on the client. Yeah. But I've got been doing this so long. You get what I mean? Like I said, there's a formula. I know if there's a restaurant, I do these four or five different things. There's a pretty good chance that they're going to like it. You get what I mean? And sure. it kind of yeah. reminds me of, you know, dealing with people who do like, uh, you know, the branding or logo type work or even like websites, right? One of the first questions you get from them is what's your budget, right? Because yeah, I can design yeah. you a website for Ten to fifteen thousand dollars, or I can design you a website for five hundred bucks. What are you trying to achieve, right? That's the first thing. And what budget do you have? So, understanding and setting the expectations there, like you said, is is critical. Otherwise, you're going back and forth a million times on that stuff. So, Money is the key to everything. <laughs> do you have an approval process? They have to like sign off. On oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing? They've got a they've got to sign a thing back saying I approve. You know, and they understand that the, you know, deposits non-refundable and that if they don't pay the bill two weeks after the sign has been installed, the sign will come down and okay. it'll remain there until it is paid in full. And then at that point, there'll be a $65 reinstallation fee to put your sign okay. back up. Nice. So you spelled out the whole process for them. So it's oh, good. yeah. I'd tell them. I write to their <laughs> face the same way I'm telling you. You got two weeks yeah. and I'm taking it down. Wow, you know what I mean? It doesn't sure. matter to me. Uh, it makes sense. I mean, especially with your past experience is what you're saying, which I'm, I'm amazed. Oh, yeah, frank, yeah, people yeah. People act like that in this day and age. but Because you can't, if somebody comes in, if you don't take a deposit and you come in and you, you, you make their sign and then they don't come back, you can't sell that to somebody else. No, it's a custom product. Yeah. And the deposit it covers the materials. Do you get what I mean? So yeah. if they don't come back, at least I didn't lose money on the materials. The other half of the money is usually mine. You get what I mean? So the, yep. they give me the money, I buy the materials, I do the work. Sure. And that protects them and me. Like if they don't like it, they don't pay for it or they don't pay the other half. Right. Or I've got to make the corrections until they're happy enough with it to pay me my other half. Makes sense. You get what I mean? Yep. <clears throat> but if they approve it and then I put the sign up, because I won't hang a sign until they've you know signed off on it. Sure. If it's up in the air and they all of a sudden don't like it, then then I got problems. But if they've approved it and then I put the sign up and then they'll they don't pay me, it says right on it. You know what I mean? You got two weeks. Yep, makes sense. That's right. it. So I need you to complete this sentence for me. Um, I could not do this business if it wasn't for blank. What would you fill in the blank with? I couldn't do this business if it wasn't for blank. 
person, place, or thing, whatever I want. Whatever you want. Yep. <laughs> Couldn't do this if it wasn't for, I don't know, probably my plotter. That's <laughs> the main tool okay. and everything. Main tool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. Interesting. I mean, are you still passionate about the sign business? I mean, do you, when you I was never passionate going, about the sign business. Never, never passionate about that. I mean, I like it. Like I said, I like aspects of it. I okay. didn't want to do this. <laughs> like, no, I wanted to make movies, man. I wanted to work on horror movies and sure. stuff. And I, I, I never did it and I missed my ship. So I'm, this is my midlife crisis. Okay. So instead of forcing my wife and getting a, 20 year old in a Porsche, I'm going to make a monster movie instead. There you go. What's uh, what's the due date when the movie is going to be released? Do you have you picked a date yet on that? No, next, it'll be ready next, next summer. It's, next I mean, it doesn't matter. Cause it's just, I just call up the drive-in theater, you know, he'll know a couple weeks at a time and we'll run an ad in the paper. We'll do some radio spots. Sure. Yeah. See what it does. I, I think you're going to have a bigger following on that than you think. Um, I think that'd be cool, but at yeah. the same time, I'm not trying to get my hopes up about it either. You set yourself up for a lot of disappointment that way. It's better yeah. to just expect it to be a, and then you know, <laughs> it's a labor of love, though, man. It's a yeah, love. yeah, it'll all be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. No, I, I think I see a lot of people with the traffic online looking at your uh, looking at your work asking for updates they're interested in updates so there's there's a definite uh there's a definite need there and so when i think about some of the things you do on the side that you're passionate about and that you kind of have interest like i think about that baby yoda thing you did right the grogu oh that was yeah. fun there's like oh there's you know fun. what remember when i was talking about the sides for that yeah. thing yeah. well it was a gift for my kid for christmas so when i gave it to him and i was like well we still gotta do the sides for it right he went online and found uh so, you know, you can buy like the Han Solo life-size carbonite, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, somebody just molded those little control panels on the sides. Okay. $40 a piece, you can buy the control panel with LED lights already in it. Nice. So he ordered two, two of the side things. So when they come in and I put it all together, it should go up a whole nother level of coolness because now it's got, it's not me just trying to come up with some panel for the side. It's, right real panels you know right. molded off the thing so yeah i'll send you pictures of those when that was that'd be cool i mean i look at that and i see people online ask they're asking me like is your buddy gonna sell that because i'll buy it right now and i'm like i don't know if he is he's kind of just seeing what's out there but i mean there's a definite interest in that stuff man let me get the sides on it and then we'll <laughs> go from there let me get it done before we start talking i really i was just trying to make a christmas gift you know what i mean yeah. i wasn't trying to start a baby yoda and carbonite factory <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. It way bucket, you know what I mean? I can yeah. be in there for $10 an hour, laying up Yodas all day. I don't know, maybe. It's a little side gig, man. You never like know. Like sued by Disney. <laughs> like a copyright infringement. Uh, they're not making one. They're not making one of Baby Yoda at Carbonite. I'm pretty there sure. <laughs> cool. Well, Tony, man, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. You know, yeah, it was fun. Are we, are we done? Are we winding it's down fun here? to catch up. And, uh, it's always interesting to learn about your friends and their business and what they're doing and you know how they got into things. It's uh, I just I find this extremely interesting when I talk to people. Yeah, well, but, let me know if I can do anything else. This was fun. This was whatever I need to do. Absolutely. Um, for the people who are listening, um, if you're interested in hiring Tony and his crew to do some exceptional signs and custom artwork, uh, Wayward Studios, located at 26 Osborne Street, Studio Six, Auburn, New York, one three zero two one. Uh, number for the shop 315-406-5514 you can visit them on the web waywardstudiosny.com check it out they got some tremendously cool stuff great gallery of work to look at and I'll put links in the podcast I hope all of you listening out there have enjoyed the podcast we're looking forward to upcoming episodes with Joe McDermott of Karma a telecom company and Aptude with Guy DeRosa in the IT development space if you know of a business owner or entrepreneur who has a unique success or experience that you think people need to hear about, please send those recommendations to info at opsqc.com. If you're interested in sponsoring or advertising your business or products with us to get more exposure, feel free to reach out to us at info at opsqc.com as well. Thank you again. Be safe, be productive, and stay healthy. 
We'll be back in two weeks with our next guest.